Well, good morning, and welcome to English class. I am Mr. Crawford, your English teacher. Sorry, my wife gave me a haircut, and it was free. She didn't charge me, and I'm just impressed how she did it. She did a really good job. That, and I'm, I'm looking at myself, so, you know, you kind of notice things. You don't really look at yourself a lot. Too short here, maybe? I don't know. Good on top. Good length on top. A little short here. Enough about myself. How was Thanksgiving break? That was a whole week. We've never had that before. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm enjoying it right now as it is Saturday. I'm recording this and getting ready to go back to school in a couple of days. Well, we're picking right up where we left off on, in the book Heaven, written by Angela Johnson. This takes place in the town Heaven, Ohio, and the main character is, that's right, Marley. 14-year-old girl, um, she discovered that her Uncle Jack is really her, you guessed it, her dad. Her Uncle Jack that she's been wiring money to for as long as she, she can remember. Uncle Jack has been writing her letters as he travels the country because he can't deal with the death of his wife, her mother. And his brother, Uncle Jack's brother and, and um, his brother's wife is taking care of Marley really biologically Marley's uncle and aunt but all of her life she's known them as mom and dad and they found she found out that uncle jack is really her dad and her mom and dad are really her biological aunt and uncle and that's kind of hard because she's always known the truth to be something different you know i always thought you're my mom and dad and yes they they are and they were and they still are but biologically um, it's their aunt and uncle, and there was something that happened with Jack, Jack's mom, or Jack's wife, I'm sorry, Marley's mom, was killed um, in a car accident, and he couldn't deal with the grief and the pain, so he said, please, brother, take care of my daughter, Marley, I can't do it, I can't take care of myself, I need to just leave, and he escaped that pain, and he's been on the road since, and we're going to find out what's going to happen <clears throat> Marley is dealing with this new, um, this truth, this new truth that she just discovered. So let's find out. A note I wrote to Jack. Jack, do you think about me like I'm your daughter? Do you think about me like that at all? Marley. Then I tore it up. Hadn't been down to write Jack, hadn't been down to wire Jack money in weeks Mom and Pop stop asking, and I stop wanting to. Butchie does it now. Hmm. She doesn't wire money. Who wires the money? Butchie does now. He wanted to know how he could give. How, he wanted to know how we could give Jack so much money. So he asked. Pop seemed surprised, but told him. And this is what Butchie told me. My mom, Christine, died in a car accident, and it looked like the car company was at fault. Jack got a lot of money. He got so much of it that it kind of freaked him out. So he put it all in the bank and let Pops deal with it. But she says Pops told him he thought it was strange that neither he nor I had asked before. But she said he didn't ask because he never thought about it. I just thought my parents loved Jack and would give him anything. That's just me not knowing about money. But she says Pops told him, told it, told him it all just like that. And I'm thinking to myself how easy it would all had have been to just tell me in the beginning. Just like that. Alone in my room again, I open the baby, I open the baby Mona box. Besides my baby clothes is a diamond ring and a velvet box and some letters Christine had written to Jack. I haven't read any of them yet, but written on the top of the envelope are the words love letters. Bobby says people don't write love letters anymore. He says it's old-fashioned, but kind of beautiful. Most people just go on the net and email why, who they love. I think of Bobby as old-fashioned in a way. That's why he knows. Love letters, love letters, love letters, love letters. Petals fall out of the first letter. Just fall out and blow all around my room because a breeze comes out of nowhere and carries the dark yellow flowers all over the place. Christine liked yellow flowers. I am Christine's daughter, so that must be where I got my love of flowers. 
The woman who digs in the yard now is my mother, is not my mother, is my mother, is not my mother, who I gave my love of flowers from. She is not the woman who loved Jack, then died and left him with a little baby, me. The hands I look at now are not the hands of the woman who digs in the yard. That can't be. My mother is the woman who wrote love letters to my father, who is not the man who works at the lumber yard and loves ice cream. It's starting to be real because there are love letters. So she's going back and forth of the woman out there. I thought I had her hands. I thought I was from her, from her body, but that's my aunt. It's actually this woman who, who's passed away, who wrote these letters. Those are the hands that I, where I got my hands from. Her love of flowers, that's where I got my love of flowers. So it's just this discovery. She's questioning and analyzing it. Today I put every penny I had into the church relief can at Ma's. I stuffed dollar bills into the can until Ma reached over and gently pulled my hands away. Mrs. Maple broke her ankle playing tennis and had walked on, walked on it a half a day before Shuggy's dad finally picked her up out of the front yard, put her in the car, and took her to the hospital. The caddy screeched down the road with the twins running behind it like their parents were never coming back. They walked back to the driveway holding hands. Shuggy goes over and wraps her arms around them and it's the first time I ever saw her even seem like she cared for anybody who was related to her. The twins look at her and smile and then walk back to the house, still hand in hand. Shuggy sits down in the front yard beside me and pulls up big handfuls of grass and throws them up in the air. She's always been like that, she says. Who and like what? Shuggy lays back on the beautiful grass. She pulls out a piece of clover. Our yard is full of both of them. My mom is something. She never has pain or problems. Some people would call that perfect. Now remember that. Shuggy says this. My mom is something. She never has pain or problems. Some people would call that perfect. Your mom's scary because she doesn't complain. Shuggy rolls on her, over on her stomach and pulls up more grass. Shuggy says, I'll never be like her. She says it's real sad, though, and that surprises me. I mean, Shuggy is beautiful like her mom and everything. It's funny, because I don't think, I didn't think she cared to be like anybody in her family. The perfect maples. Shuggy wanted to be a perfect maple. I start to see her differently. I start to think, I start to think it doesn't just roll off her back since she stopped cutting herself because she couldn't be perfect. The twins are running out of the front door towards Shuggy. I say... Later, Shuggy waves and puts one of her tw one of the twins on her back. She gives him a horseback ride until they both fall on the ground laughing. I almost run into Pops as he's coming out of Ma's. He should be at work, but there he is, munching on chips and sucking on a juice box like it's something he always does in the middle of the day. I get a hit of cool breeze from the air conditioning. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Let's see if this works. Leaves. They're taking my leaves. It works. Don't drag it. Sorry. They're taking my leaves outside and I can show you. I just want to make sure. Ah, uh ah. -uh. His back hurts. <laughs> Sorry guys, Rumkey's here. They took all my leaves. <laughs> I was pause. I almost run into Pops as he's coming out of my, okay. We walk over to the bench outside of Miles and sit down. Pops says, had a few errands to run, so I took the afternoon off. So this is what it feels like to hang out in the middle of the day. Yep, I guess this is it. I look up at the street. The street music is getting a piano delivered and a woman pushing a stroller walks past singing a lullaby. Two doors down, the bookstore is having their windows clean. Guess I haven't missed much. What's up with you? Doing anything fun? I thought I'd go over and pick up Feather. Bobby's working at home today. He's painting small signs, so Feather's probably covered in paint by now. Pops hands me another chip. You're a good friend, Marley. I look at Pops as he finishes his drink, spot, his drink, drink box. He looks far away from Center Street in heaven. He could be off in the mountains somewhere. He could be sitting on top of the highest mountain in the world. 
What were you doing at Ma's? Errands. What kind of errands? Pops laughs. Errands I can't do if I'm working. I could have done them for you. You going to keep bothering me? Is, that, is it that you have too much free time or do you really care about the things I have to do? I laugh and say, the first one. I get up to go. Pop scrunches up his scoop, his drink box and throws it in the trash can by the be by the bench. Say hi to Bobby for me. Hi to Feather too. I look at Pop still sitting on the bench. He's gone back to the mountains. Mr. and Mrs. Maples wave to me as they pass me in their car. A second later, Mr. Maples has backed the car up and is smiling at me. I go over to the car. Mrs. Maples has a cast on her leg and is smiling like her husband. Mr. Maple says, we're having a cookout tomorrow. Hope you can come. Yeah, I can come. Shuggy invited me this morning. Mrs. Maple leans toward her husband. Glad she did. Mrs. Maple waves another car around. I just noticed that, Miss, that the Maples are wearing the same tennis outfits. Mrs. Maple doesn't look like a person who just broke her ankle. Her hair is in a perfect bun. <clears throat> she says, I'm glad our daughter, I'm glad our daughter found you. It's hard for her to make friends. I start to feel uncomfortable. In the middle of the street, I start to think the smiling maples are going to have me for lunch. I guess my eyes are getting to look like a deer in cotton headlights. Because Mr. Maple says, I guess we should be on our way. I haven't been in, into work today. Looks like a half day off is going to turn into a whole day. I say, yeah, everybody's taking off today. They smile and drive off. The twins will be glad to see them. Maybe Shuggy, too. I'm starting to think the family thing isn't as clear as I thought. The Maples, I, I can't get past the fact that they really love Shuggy. Perfect looks, house, and all don't keep them from seeing who she is. Mrs. Maples' eyes got all watery when she was telling me that when she was telling me she was happy Shuggy met me. I wish I could dislike the Maples more. I tried for Shuggy's sake and the scars on her legs. Every day, it all gets more fuzzy around the edges about the people who call themselves our families. I think of Pops in the mountains. Feather is only painted a little when I get to Bobby's. Bobby sees me and gets the thankful look on his face, then kisses Feather as I take her out the door. After a moment, he runs out after me with her stuffed diaper bag, gives it to me with a kiss on the head, and goes back to work. Feather and I sit a while on the bench, by Ma's and watch the world go by. I think about folks as Feather falls asleep, dreaming baby dreams, and it's like we're in the mountains too. Instead of going to Shuggy's mom's picnic, I hang upside down in the maple tree out back eating pop rocks and thinking about how a lot of animals live their whole lives jumping around from tree to tree. Does she go to the picnic? Can't stand the thought of having too much fun. I feel too sad and shaky, so no picnic. I figure if I can stay up here a while, everybody will think I went to the picnic and leave me alone. They're watching me, you know. I started noticing a few days ago. It's not only mom and pops watching me, Butchie is too. We'll be, th we'll be talking about something like skateboarding or comic books or how I'd been thinking about moving to Montana and all of a sudden, he's not talking anymore. He's watching me and waiting for what? I don't know. I think about it for a while and watch some squirrels on the ground looking up at me. I drop them a few rocks and they sniff, then ignore them. I'm glad, I'm kind of glad they do because a squirrel eating pop rocks would not be pretty. Have you ever had pop rocks? I guess if you think about it, a girl hanging upside down from a tree limb, eating candy and getting paranoid about everything isn't that great either. Pop. Ah. Okay, we'll stop there on page 112, about 15 minutes. Um, make sure you complete the quiz. Questions about if she went to the picnic. Um, questions about Ma, Shuggy's mom. Questions about um, Bobby. Okay, thanks for listening and see ya.